In this tutorial in Tidler Pro, we're going to look at how to use keyframes with graphic objects. I'm re-recording this particular tutorial because the YouTube robot, for some reason, didn't like something in the previous one, so we'll give it another shot here. What I've done is I'm in PowerDirector and I'm using the add-on version of Tyler Pro version 1.5. I've uh, taken that and dragged it down to, to my track number one and put two things in there. I'll double click and that will bring me into my Title Pro editor. We'll enlarge it a little bit so you can follow along a little more clearly on the screen. And the editor now has two items in it. It has a paragraph, a text, title text, called Vacation Trip, and it has a background shape, which is simply a little gradient I put there. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to do something with a graphic object. To bring in a graphic object, I click on the File menu at the top and click on Import Image. Then I simply move uh, to my file system where I want to find my object here. And that I've located here in my display file subfolder and I'm going to use this airplane and it brings it in it's unfortunately it just calls it shape but it brings it in at the very center of the screen um, at uh, a reduced size so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the airplane fly in from one side to the other now I could call, use some of the the built-in transitions in my library if I want to do that I can click up here on library and I can click on transitions and animations and I can click on maybe by fly in category and try a couple I hover over and there's one and here's another one and here's another one and a different one that comes up this way I could try maybe a um, fly past and highlight this one and some of these are nice but if I don't find a preset animation that exactly does what I want, um, I'm not stuck. I can actually use keyframes to customize my animation without using any of these presets. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to click on the attributes key at the top, make sure I have my airplane, my graphic highlighted. And we're going to make the airplane fly in across the top of the screen from one position to the other. So in order to do that, I make sure I have my graphic highlighted and we're going to turn on keyframing. So I click on turn on keyframing. It instantly creates one keyframe at the very left of my object. So that's a little blue ball down here. And then I have a, a list here under add keyframe of all the keyframes. Now right now I have one and the, this is the attributes it had when I clicked on it. So if I just go ahead and play this, nothing happens because I haven't changed a thing. I just created a keyframe. So I'm going to go to the keyframe. I can, I can click on it with a mouse. An easier way is simply to go to the keyframe list and click on keyframe, especially for the one that's on either end because it's only half a circle. And now I'm going to take that and I'm going to change the position of it. I'm going to move it up, move my image up. Now I want it to start off the screen. Now I could try to drag, but it's a lot easier if I move up slightly to take my X position and just drag it to the right until the image is off the screen. So that will be my starting keyframe. So it understands the changes I've just made in the location of my airplane. Now I'm going to go to the end of my title over here and we'll click on add another keyframe. The easy way to do that is go to my keyframe list here and click the plus button at the upper right. Now that added a keyframe and it numbered it keyframe number two. So there I want it to be all the way at the left side of the screen. I want it to fly perfectly horizontal. So instead of using the mouse, I'll just simply move the X position across the screen until I get just a little bit off of that side. So there is the plane at the end of my uh, particular title. So what I'm going to do is put, press the play key and you'll see how my plane flies from one side to the other at the duration that I uh, 
have chosen for my title. Nice little feature. Now let's assume I want to do something else. I want the plane to, to stop uh, maybe about here and I want it to freeze for a bit. So what I'll, I'll do is I'll add another keyframe. I hit the plus key here and it renumbers the keyframes. This was keyframe two, it's now keyframe three and it goes sequentially from the left to the right. So this is now my keyframe two. So now I've added a keyframe that has the plane at this location. And uh, if I, again, if I don't do anything else, it will move from this location to this location and it won't look like anything has changed. Let me show you. I'll click on this, press my play key. Now, so how can I freeze it? Well, I need to copy this location further down in the timeline. So I'm going to move to keyframe number two I right click there on the I click on the ball I have a copy keyframe option at the bottom and then I'm going to move over a little bit and I'll right click and I have a paste keyframe option so what this does it takes all the attributes of the image at this location and it copies them at this location so I'll show you what that does in our in our um, flow of our title here We'll hit, move this, move the um, cursor over there. We'll hit play. It comes there. It freezes, and then it continues. So that's one way in which you can change a keyframe. And of course, if you want to ch have it come in faster or move out or linger longer, you just move the keyframe manually with the mouse, and now it will it will stay frozen in that location for a longer time, and then it will move faster from this point in time to this point in time. Because basically a keyframe just gives you the attributes of an object uh, at a certain point in time. And so it calculates, uh, in order to get from here to here, I need to move. In order to get from here to here, I don't move at all. Now you can change things besides movement. You can also go to a keyframe. Let's click on keyframe three. And let's say I want to, to decide to make the plane uh, get smaller between this location and this location. So at keyframe three, we'll keep it at this size. Then we'll move to keyframe four, and now we will change the scale of my airplane. And I'll shrink it down a little bit. We'll just move it backwards here. Oops. Uh, I need to lock it so the X, Y, and Z scale change together. There we go. And now I've changed the scale. So watch what happens now. Even though it was off the screen, uh, it'll come to this point and then it will shrink, will fly away as it were. So it goes there, freezes at the same size, and now the size is different between keyframe three and keyframe four. You can also change such features as opacity. Besides getting smaller, I can click on keyframe number four. And even though I can't see it on my screen, I'm going to take my opacity and I'll dial it down. So it's almost, almost transparent, not quite. And uh, now if I go ahead and play it because I've changed the features of a keyframe, well, it'll, it'll freeze and now it gets smaller and then it gets more invisible. Now, in order to remove a keyframe, all you need to do is click on that particular keyframe. We'll, st we'll stop our uh, preview here. And then you click on the minus key and it will remove it completely. Or you, as I say, you can move them simply by taking the mouse and moving the little blue ball left or right. And uh, that gives you the adjustments. Or you can go to any of the keyframes. I'll go to keyframe four. I'll dial the opacity back up to normal. And now it won't fade on me. It will get smaller because I didn't change the scale. But I can go ahead and move it that way. So those are just some of the ways in which you can use keyframes with a graphic image in Tidler Pro.